Hi guys, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about audience analysis here. Um, you will notice that throughout the course of this unit, we talk about audience a lot. That's, this unit is prepping us for our next unit where we'll really talk about audience. Um, and part of the final assignment that you'll have for this unit is revising a set of instructions and talking about the decisions you made in the writing process when you were taking into consideration your audience. So all of what we're learning about in this video is going to help us not only in this unit, but in also um, also in future units. So that's kind of the goal of um, this content. If you have questions, let me know. There'll be some readings in the FYI section that also talk about audience if you want to grab information from there and kind of just compile it all together in your brain so you have a thorough understanding of how audience affects writing and how writing can affect the audience too. We're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Um, so, whoop. I, I want to talk about the, the two different sides or ways that you can approach audience analysis. Um, you know, when you're thinking about your writing decisions and the decisions that you're going to make, particularly regarding your instructions, there's a lot of things to decide on. How am I going to lay out my steps? What images am I going to use, if any at all? Um, what will my wording look like? Will my wording be formal or informal? What will my tone be? You know, sometimes um, you don't really sense a certain tone in a set of instructions, but other times you sense a um, a very humorous tone, or you can even maybe sense a tone of like being reprimanded from a set of instructions. Maybe the author's using some all capital yelling style um, writing or something like that. Uh, you want to, you know, think about how will I, what format will I present my instructions in? Will I make a video? Will I have an infographic? Will I just make it text based? How many steps am I going to have? How long will those steps be? Am I going to write them, you know, in bullet points or one, two, threes list style? Or am I going to write out a paragraph for my steps? Um, and all of these decisions that you make certainly can, the decisions can come from um, the type of topic or set of instructions that you're providing. So if the if it's a really complicated thing, it might make more sense to have a video or a lot of extra language like in a paragraph or something like that. But other factors can influence the writing decisions that you make and that one of those other factors is the audience. So when you're considering your audience, you might consider age. Um, you know, it, if you are writing to a set of preschoolers or young children, you're talking about, you know, what, how to make a scrapbook or how to put together a scrapbook page, then you might say it's best to, um, have an adult present or you might, um, tell your audience to use a uh, glue stick instead of a glue gun, or you might tell your audience to use um, safety scissors instead of those fancy scissors you found in your mom's room. Um, and you might have language in your instructions that, that say things like, if you are having trouble, get help from an adult, something like that. And you'll see a lot of um, a lot of those types of languages and instructions for younger children. You might also think about education level. Um, the, the, the language that you use will and can be affected by your audience's education level. Um, most instructions that you guys will run into are written for, I guess, a general audience. And a lot of companies, when they're writing their instructions or when their technical writers are writing their instructions, they have to remember that while there might be language, they understand if they have a general audience with a basic education level, maybe a high school diploma, some college or just college degree, then the instructions can't talk about the big words and um, the heavy jargon that might 
be understood with someone who has like a master's degree in whatever that field is that the instructions are written. Um, so education level can influence audience, especially when we're writing about really niche instructions that are specific to a certain type of um, profession, I guess. You also want to think, and I think that this is paired together, you know, who, what is your audience's expertise or familiarity with the subject? So, for example, if you're writing an instruction set on how to make a quilt square, um, it, are you writing to someone who's never been in front of a sewing machine before? If so, you're really going to have to walk them through the whole process. Or are you writing to some someone who knows how to sew um, but has just never made a quilt square? Or are you writing even to a long-term quilter? And, and the length often of how many steps you need to provide and the things you need to talk about will be different. Um, you might think about the following as well. And again, it's going to depend on your topic, right? Some of these things aren't going to matter and some of them are, and it depends on your topic. So economic status, how much money does, um, the person make religious beliefs, political beliefs, social beliefs or preferences. Again, some of these things aren't going to matter. Does, your religious belief or social belief matter on making grilled cheese? I guess only if you're vegan. Um, or uh, I, maybe some things I don't know about. Um, does, would your political belief matter about how to tie your shoe? Likely not. So you, it's not, I'm not telling you that you have to take into consideration everything here, but these are things to consider if they apply. Um, and you'll, you'll certainly be able to identify, I think, with, um, like marketing tactics. So whenever we are being told anything from a marketer who's trying to sell us something, trying to get us to do something, right, buy this product, they are taking into consideration all of these things as well. And they're also considering gender and race um, when they're marketing. Many marketers are. Most marketers are. Um, I don't necessarily encourage anyone to consider gender and race when writing instructions, and I have a disclaimer in just a minute, but that certainly doesn't mean that you're not going to come across instructions that are already considering like gender and race, for example, um, particularly gender. You know, if you see a set of instructions in it, and you can tell that it's likely written for men or it's likely written for women, that's because while I think we should get away from doing that, people aren't doing, you know, people aren't getting away from doing that. Um, I, I have on my next slide um, a disclaimer here that talks about that. And there's a link for further reading. So if you come to these slides in the FYI section and you want to read the article that I got these quotes from, I think it's really interesting. So when we're talking about audience, if you do an audience analysis in terms of who, who was this product intended for, who were these instructions intended for, you can certainly say, well, the marketers or the creators of these instructions or this product are targeting men or are targeting women or are targeting a specific race. Um, the problem with that happening, which it does happen, so that's what I'm saying is it does happen, but there could be something problematic and that's what this this article is talking about. Um, and, and so I'm just going to read this here and elaborate. Why shouldn't you be able to target an ad just for men if the product you make is something that mostly men use, like a men's deodorant or a hammer um, or something like that? It wouldn't make much sense to target it to women, would it? Right? But this is often where things go wrong and causes damage to our society and our market, not in the short term, but in how men and women perceive their options for generations to come. And in the article where I got this quote from, the authors discuss um, trends in men and women jumping into careers. So for example, they, they talk about computer science and they talk about when the first computers were being marketed to um, 
the public and you think back to the 80s with those big boxy computers that we would probably laugh at today um, there were advertisements for young old men women their children kids boys girls you know it's kind of all over the place but then as the tech industry started to boom we started to notice that um, the advertisements were really being targeted more to men. And if we look at the data, and this is what the article is doing, it's looking at the correlation between that, and it's showing that when the tech industry started to boom and the advertisements started to mostly be marketing to men, um, we also saw a drop in the number of women going into the computer science fields. So it's really interesting, and, and you could say a couple of things on that. And it, it, I think it, to me, seems cyclical. Um, you could say, well, isn't it possible that there were just more men in the computer science field? And so marketers realized, hey, let's just talk to the men in this field, because there's so many of them. I mean, there's 95% men in the field. It makes the most sense to just target the men here. Well, of course, that that's that could have been the cause for all these advertisements to be marketed more toward toward men. Um, but then that marginalizes women and the in the field, and also tells future women in the field that. Um, or future women thinking of going into the field that, well, this field really isn't for you. It's it's mostly for men, um, which then puts more men in the field and less women in the field. And then more marketers are saying, let's let's market to men. Um, and this can go vice versa, right? This could go with women in the nursing profession and the way that we um, market things for women, um, women in quilt making or sewing or baking or whatever. Um, so it's just it's something to think about because I think that the two are totally intertwined and how we market can certainly change our societal perceptions of people and of jobs especially um, and if you want to know more about this then I would say do some further reading am I saying that there's never going to be a time to market just to women no certainly not there are absolutely products that men just don't use and I'm sure that you can think of some of those and am I saying that there's ever a time to not market to men no of course not there's probably things out there that most mostly men use I'm not a man so I can't think of an example off the top of my head um, but these are just really interesting things to think about regarding audience and regarding your own audience analysis so I want to go back and look at some examples and talk a little bit about some of the things here layout images wording format length bullets um, and then our audience considerations with a couple of examples I have so here is an example of just a purely text-based set of instructions on how to wash your hands. It says, follow five steps to wash your hands the right way. Washing your hands is easy, and it's one of the most effective ways to prevent the spread of germs. Clean hands can stop germs from spreading from one person to another and throughout an entire community, from your home and workplace to childcare facilities and hospitals. Follow these five steps every time. Wet your hands with clean running water, warm or cold, Turn off the tap and apply soap. Lather your hands by rubbing them together with soap. Lather the backs of your hands between your fingers and under your nails. Scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds. Need a timer? Hum the happy birthday song from beginning to end twice. Rinse your hands well under clean running water. Dry your hands using a clean towel or air dry them. Okay, so one thing that I picked up on as I was reading this was the layout. Before the steps were given, there was an explanation of why it's important to wash our hands the right way. This to me suggests that someone reading this set of instructions has already been washing their hands. This isn't like um, if you're new to hand washing and who would be new to hand washing? Well, a child, right? A one year old or a, um, an 11 month old or something like that. Um, so this is for someone older than that. Someone who's at least been washing their hands for a little bit. The other thing I notice is that um, it's got uh, a quick discussion, eh, not the right word, um, a quick statement about where preventing spreading germs is most important. It talks about home, workplace, child care facilities, and hospitals. For me, this suggests that these instructions were written to um, 
adults. I'm not really sure what age beyond that, but certainly adults, because children don't have workplaces, ideally. Um, and they're probably not worried about the germs they're spreading in a childcare facility. It's more likely that the adults are worried about the germs they're spreading. Children aren't going to hospitals on their own. Adults are taking them there. Um, you know, workers in childcare facilities and hospitals, but those are also adults. So I really think that due to the text-based nature of this, um, um, the fact that it talks about, you know, why this is important, and then some of the specific language and places of identification really speak to this set of instructions being for um, adults in particular, adults who have, who are trying to, you know, maybe they have like a social mindset of not wanting to spread germs. Um, now we're looking at another example, and this is a uh, this is just a visual of how to wash your hands properly, and it has some pictures and then a couple of captions below each picture. So it's titled "How to Wash Your Hands Properly," and in in the first square we see um, hands under the water. It says "Wet your hands." Then we see liquid soap, <laughs> and then we see. Um, lather and scrub 20 seconds and it's not even 20 uh the word seconds isn't even written out it's sec then we see rinse 10 sec then we see dry your hands so we see turn off the tap um and you notice too that I, i'm adding words right it just says turn off tap not turn off the tap so really a lot of shorthand here and a final box that says don't forget to wash then there's a list of places not to forget. Between your fingers, under your nails, the tops of your hands. So this is a short, quick, to the point reminder of how to wash your hands properly. Again, doesn't seem like it's for first time users, but where would I expect to find this? Just with a visual reminder, I might expect to see this in a bathroom. Um, I, For me, I think because it's so visual, because there's such a reminder, you wouldn't probably find this in your own home. You're likely to find this out in public, um, maybe in a hospital bathroom, um, possibly in a school bathroom. I find that this could certainly be for adults, but is likely really put out there <coughs> for younger children or, or just maybe like school age children. And um, because of the visual, because of the quick steps, it's like just a nice visual reminder to spend a little bit more time washing your hands. Um, but then there are also some things that I don't know if kids really think about. Like, for example, in the turn off the tap box, we see um, that they're turning off the tap with a paper towel. So they're really giving us even extra bits of information within the visuals. Um, you could you could say this this set of instructions is for people using the bathroom um, who, in a public space, who need a visual reminder of, um, you know, how to stop spreading germs or how to wash their hands or something like that. Um, so we're not really taking into consideration a whole lot of things. Like, it doesn't matter what your political belief is. It doesn't matter what your religious belief is or um, your social beliefs or your gender or um, things like that and you can still, this set of instructions is still for you. Then we have um, this video and it's 58 seconds, so we're going to watch it. It's a video of a little boy and he's telling us how to wash our hands. Maybe, maybe we're gonna watch it, here we go. Do you know how to wash your hands? First, wet your hands, then get some soap. Rub your hands together to make a lather. Make sure you get in between your fingers and up onto your wrist. Rub your hands together for at least 20 seconds. It's just like seeing the ABCs. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs, next time won't you sing with me? Now let's rinse all the suds and the germs down the sink. Then dry your hands. And now you have clean hands. 
Okay, um, so we have this video and some things that stick out for me is that the narrator and the person in our video is a child. That tells me this is probably um, for children and it's likely that this is an instructional video that might be played at a preschool um, or an elementary school when the teacher is helping students learn about hygiene, um, learn about how to stop the spread of germs, things like that. Because we have a kid, the, the audience is going to identify with that age, right? With the age of the child. Um, we know that it's possibly for a younger audience too because the song he says is the ABCs and we associate the ABCs with young children. Um, we do see him, you know, doing some steps in here that he doesn't necessarily talk about, like turning the tap off with a paper paper towel, things like that, but you're, you're not likely to find this video in the bathroom. I would say it's probably a classroom video um, for younger kids as an instruction and a, a modeled example of how to wash their hands. So they really can hear and see and then probably practice immediately following this. So this video gives us um, a glimpse into who our audience might be. So there's so many things that you can take into consideration when you're thinking about audience. You know, the, the, the type of format you're going to use, how how long will it be? You know, the video we watched was 58 seconds. All of these are very short things. The shortest probably being a quick glance at the um, image while you're washing your hands, just as a mindful reminder. Um, and then the 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 layout, the the language, all of it is very basic for a basic audience for anyone to use, but can suggest particularly age and you know. How, how you are engaging with these these steps. So I want you guys to think about that um, as we progress through this unit and remember this for next unit because all of this stuff will come into play again. If you have any questions, certainly let me know. Um, and I look forward to knowing all about your writing decisions regarding audience and your instructions.